We're back out at the Big Lake today, and I want to show you two of my favorite late fall and early winter presentations that are sure to get you bit. Stick around. It's the holiday season once again. And all across YouTube, especially in the fishing channels, you're seeing holiday buying guides, Black Friday specials, and all sorts of crazy things. Well, I want to do something different. So I want you guys to go to the comments down below and post what it is you want for Christmas. And it doesn't just have to be your fishing wish list. It can be anything. And go crazy. You want a $100,000 Skeeter 21-foot bass boat with all the trimmings? Go nuts. Let everyone know. Post your wish list in the comments below. And maybe it's a good place to tell your significant other or friends and family just exactly what you want for Christmas. You can see it's another windy day. It's the late afternoon. The water looks like it's got a little bit of stain to it. Um, we're going to fish a couple of presentations that I'm sure that you guys are really going to appreciate. Like we talked about before, keeping it simple, keeping it basic, you know, uh, especially when you're fishing it from the bank. You don't have a lot of room, a lot of places for tackle storage. So we're going to be using two different presentations that are on opposite ends of the spectrum, yet in the same side of the spectrum. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. Let's get down there and get to fishing. Oh, there we go, I got him. I saw you follow him in. There we go. I saw you follow him in. All right. Who's been watching the channel recently knows that I've been just killing it lately on a bladed jig using uh, all different brands. I've used um, slobber knockers by Berkeley. I've used Z-Man chatterbaits, and I've used a Thunder Cricket straight. But another thing that has been good for me lately is this guy right here, a good old hack attack 3 8 ounce swim jig. And it comes through this hydrilla so well. And I kind of pop it as I'm reeling it. Kind of do the old Alabama shake here, right? But I can also just kind of reel and then pop, reel and then pop. And that's kind of how I want to do this a little bit. I've got a 3.3 Kitec on the back of it. A uh, swim impact, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. And whenever you're looking for a more subtle presentation, something that is, you know, not going to make a whole bunch of noise, but actually be a lot more realistic or a lot more natural, that is something that the fish are going to be attracted to, you know, when under high pressure situations, under gin clear water situations. You know, those are the types of things that uh, you're going to be wanting to throw. And like we said before, whenever you're fishing from the bank, you don't have as many options for tackle storage as you do whenever you're on a great big bass boat. You know, um, some guys might be fishing out of their little john boat or a canoe or a kayak, and, but even then you still probably have more tackle storage options than you would whenever you're fishing from the bank. But as you can see here, I'm just kind of doing the Alabama shake, giving it a slow retrieve, popping it every once in a while, and that's what I'm fishing it with. It's uh, just a good old swim jig. This is a great big hydrilla flat out here. And this swim jig comes through here just as easily as you please. It doesn't get dirty. Now as far as like line tie direction, I don't care if it's perpendicular. I don't care if it's parallel. Not when it comes to a swim jig so much. Because I'm not really bottom contact with that. I'm not really, you know, stroking it. Now we can if we wanted to. It's a jig. You can fish it like a jig if you wanted to. But we're going to treat it right now more like a moving bait. And we're going to make bomb casts out there. We're going to make, uh, we're going to fan cast. And we're just going to try to see if we can't locate fish. And we're just going to use this as a search bait to begin with. This is on the opposite end of the spectrum of that bladed jig. But at the same time, it's still a jig. You know, it's, it's, it's a bladed jig if you, to take, if you take the jig off of it. Or a swim, uh, uh, or a bladed jig could actually be a swim jig that you've attached a blade to. You know, I mean... It's got, a, it's got a real nice look in the water. You can see how it looks. You can see how it goes. You know, I mean, it's got a 
It's got a great presentation. It's got a it's got a clear visible image and like I said I'm just keeping my tip up and just kind of doing the old Alabama shake a little bit. Another way you know you can do it is like the Tennessee two-step right kind of let it come down and then pull it up and then reel the slack in and then pull it up and then reel the slack in that's another way to do it you know like almost like you're doing a football jig but much much quicker you want to keep a steady pace you don't ever want that jig to really hit the bottom so and this has been a presentation that has been working very well for me uh, like I said, this is a 3 8 ounce um, Strike King Hack Attack jig, and it works amazingly well. Whatever you think you can do to get those fish excited. And you can see on this, I've got 12 pound fluorocarbon on this setup. This is my uh, bait cast. It's got a 7 to, 7 to 1 gear ratio on this, and it's got 12 pound fluorocarbon and I can, so I can cast it a good ways and again casting distance up from the bank is really important now the fish will let you know if they want something loud or if they want something subtle they'll tell you you know and it usually doesn't take too long and you'll know whether if you find fish let me rephrase that when you find the fish they'll let you know it's made to come through grass it's made to come through hydrilla it's made, made to come through eel grass buggy whips um, milfoil any of the any of the thick stuff that you can think of a swim jig will excel at that and if you're not familiar or you've not used a swim jig that much I invite you to change that a swim jig is one of the most versatile and most useful tools you can have in your arsenal and if you're not using one you are well you're you're missing out and you're missing bites and you're missing fish a swim jig is one of those few baits that you can have tied on and just go all day fishing that swim jig multiple different ways in multiple different scenarios and multiple different situations. One of the great baits that I've been throwing here lately and having a lot of success with is good old bladed jig. In this case, it's a 3 8 out slobber knocker, but I've been using Z-Man chatter baits. I have been using um, Strike King Thunder Crickets and all different sizes from a quarter ounce all the way up to a uh, half ounce which is what I've been using this is a 3 8 ounce here and I put a fluke style uh, like a do nothing dead action trailer on it and I'm just kind of basically sweeping my rod and reeling it in like that I'm basically letting the rod sweep do the action there it's a very subtle presentation now this water is pretty clear and it's got a little bit of stain to it now you're going to hear people say that uh, in the winter time you want to use more subtle presentations. The fish don't want a lot of vibration. They don't want a lot of action. And that's probably true um, for most of the country. But our water temperature here is still in the 60s. So these fish here are a little bit more active. I mean, I'm in the deep, deep south, so I am well, if you go much more south than here, you're going to hit Gulf of Mexico. So, I mean, I'm about as south as you can get without being Florida. However, these, uh, these chatterbaits and these bladed jigs are still exceptionally effective. And you vary your retrieve. You can feel it coming right through that hydrilla. And having just those two baits, having two baits that you can work with, having two baits that you can utilize on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yes, they're very similar, 
but if you need to go loud you can go loud with the bladed jig that vibrating jig will be as loud as you need it to be on the other hand if you want to go quiet and you want to go more of a subtle approach that swim jig is the way to go you can change up your presentation you can change up your trailer um, like I said I've got uh, on that swim jig I've got a paddle tail I've got a uh, boot tail actually I've got a, a Kai Tech 3.3 swim impact and that's where my thump is coming from that's where I'm getting the action on it. on this bladed jig I've got a fluke just a regular you know uh, standard size soft plastic jerkbait and I do that because I don't want a I don't want something that's got a lot of kicking motion a lot of kicking action because that's going to create a lot of drag on that jerk bait or that's going to create a lot of jerk drag on that bladed jig and it will really hamper that hunting and darting action and that's kind of what we're looking for so now another thing you can do that I like to do with a vibrating jig I like to let it sink and then I'm going to stroke it up like that like a jig and let it sink and then pull it up like a jig and you can feel it in fact I don't even know if you can you may be able to hear it in my reel whenever I'm stroking it up you can hear brrr. and get a sometimes you get a big old chunk of hydrilla on there but that's another way you can do that stroking it Pretty much like you would a jig. Helicopter cast, let it sink, pop it up, let it sink, pop it up, let it sink, pop it up. If you can have more than one retrieve on any given bait, any you know practical retrieve, and this works with a lot of things. I actually do this although not as extreme but I do something very similar with a lipless crank where I'll pop it up let it sit pop it up let it sit pop it up let it sit so there you have it with those two baits a swim jig or bladed jig you can accomplish so much on the water especially in the late fall heading into the winter if you need to go loud you can do that with a bladed jig if you need to be more subtle well you can do that with a swim jig the possibilities are endless. It's only up to how you want to fish it. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.